Okay, so today we're going to look at liquid-liquid extraction using this separatory funnel. And to illustrate how this works, we're going to use an acid base indicator, which we initially have in its deprotonated anionic form. So I'll start by adding that into the separatory funnel, which already contains two layers of immiscible liquid. Water on the top and chloroform on the bottom, because chloroform is more dense than water. So here's my indicator. which you can see is soluble in the water layer. I'll just give that a little mix. So as we'd expect, an ionic species is soluble in water and not soluble in our organic solvent. Let's protonate it. So I'm going to add a small amount of HCl, which will protonate the indicator and cause it to change color into its acidic form. I hope. Okay, so there we have it, the red, neutral, acidic form of our indicator. Now we expect this neutral species to be soluble in the organic layer, so it should extract into here. Nothing yet. Notice that I'm venting the tap here with my left hand so that any pressure buildup is released and the cap doesn't come off the bottom and leak all over my hand and the separatory funnel doesn't explode either. That started to extract. We'll have to be a little bit more vigorous with our shake. A little more cautious with our editing too, probably. <laughs> You can see that's caused a little bit of emulsification, the cloudiness inside the separatory funnel, so we need to leave that to separate into two clean layers. But you can also see that the neutral acidic form of the dye has extracted into the organic phase as we expected. Okay, so we've waited a few minutes and we can see that the top layer is almost clear. Now, if I really wanted to extract all of the dye into the organic phase and isolate it, I'd remove the bottom layer of liquid and then repeat that extraction with a fresh dose of uh, chloroform. But we're not going to do that today. Instead, we're going to illustrate that we can go backwards and forwards with this separation. So, what I'm going to do now is neutralize the water layer by adding some sodium bicarbonate. And we're using sodium bicarbonate because you'll use that in your prac, but also to illustrate that carbon dioxide is a product and we need to be very cautious about 
build up of pressure. So there's my shot of sodium bicarbonate. You can see the small amount of dye that was left in the, the aqueous phase has gone back to its blue colour, but nothing's happened in the bottom phase yet. That extraction hasn't happened. So now let me do the extraction again. This time I want you to watch carefully. When I release the pressure through the tap, I'm pointing this at the back of the fume cupboard, away from anywhere that it could affect anyone. And no, nothing happened yet. Let's give it another go. We must have done our neutralization just perfectly today. So you never quite know how big the pressure buildup's going to be. Always act as though there is going to be a pressure release and maybe a small jet of liquid come out of the nozzle. So point it towards the back of the fume cupboard and away from anybody else in the lab. All right, so now let's see what's happened. And again, we've got a bit of emulsification, this time in the bottom layer, that's breaking up pretty fast. But our anionic, deprotonated form of the dye has now been completely extracted back into the aqueous phase, and we're pretty much back where we started.